Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday um, and then happy October. This is our first fireside chat series of the month and this month is dedicated to Pilates. I'm very, very happy to be here today and having as a guest, Emily Garfield. Emily has been a two-time cancer survivor. She's an amazing businesswoman, Pilates instructor, mom, and has really a story that uh, I hope uh, you get inspired by. Um, I believe Emily is joining soon. It always takes a bit of time here on Instagram. I see Emily here. Yes, now I'm inviting Emily. Hey! Hi, Emily. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Good. It's early here. I know, right? It's 7 30 a.m. in 7 30, yeah. In California. I'm in Colorado, 8 30 oh. a.m. And on the West Coast, it's 10 30. Like it's, we're morning people. We are, I know. So uh, I, I was giving before while you were joining a quick introduction about you. And then thank you so much for joining uh, this uh, Fireside Chat Pilates series at Tuckets uh, for the month of October. Every month we have different like themes and October is, is all about Pilates. Emily, I prefer if you introduce yourself. I don't want to leave anything behind. Okay. Um, so my name's Emily and Emily Garfield. Um, I'm a Pilates teacher and um, I live in Santa Barbara, California. I own my own little studio, um, it's called The Loft and I work inside of a big um, rehab sports medicine facility. So fortunately I've been able to work this whole time during COVID because I'm under like a doctor's, um, I work and employed through them. So it's been, I feel very blessed about that. And um, so my life kind of changed um, five years ago um, when I was diagnosed with stage three C ovarian cancer and being a Pilates and yoga teacher, owning my own studio. Um, and I was going through a divorce all at the same time. It was like the worst like <laughs> storm I've ever been through. Um, the first thing was like, shoot, like, how am I going to keep my studio going? Like, how am I going to, I'm self-employed. I didn't have disability insurance. Um, that was the biggest mistake I ever made as an, you know, being an independent, um, owner. Um, I pretty much had no backup. I had zero savings and I was just pretty much like screwed to be honest with you. Um, so I was told I was going to have a major surgery where I was going to, they were going to cut my rectus abdominal muscles out. And this is very like descriptive, descriptive, but, um, since we're all Pilates people, we all know the body. And they were going to reconstruct um, my pelvic floor, my vaginal area out of my abdominal muscles. So I was just like mortified. And, um, and I ended up having an ileostomy bag, which I had to excrete my waist into a bag onto my stomach. And um, a catheter and lots of drains. And I was forced to, um, I mean, I had three little kids to take care of. I had nine-year-old twins and a 12-year-old and I was going through a divorce and I was not getting any support at that time and I still don't but um that's a whole nother story <laughs> but you know it was like I have to like wake up every day and go to work for my kids so even when I had cancer and I was diagnosed with cancer I never stopped working and wow. honestly like going to my studio was like my savior and it, the movement is medicine as I say and so I just kept doing what I do is Pilates. And, and I had to modify everything, of course, because I was exhausted. Um, I had no energy. And I couldn't, what I found is I couldn't do the same stuff that I used to do. So prior to my surgery, I got my body strong. I started doing all, of, you know, the reformer and getting my core ready for my surgery. So I call it like prehab. So I did all of my core exercises and everything before. And then I had surgery. I woke up in the hospital and my life changed. Right. Um, able to move. I, 
interesting. <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't move my body. I was in excruciating pain. And I mean, I just wanted to give up at that point. So, so I pretty yeah. much, yeah. But I, what I started doing was I was in so much pain and no nurse, no doctor told me how to help me. They just, you know, came in and took my vitals and my body taught me. And I, I'm telling you, it was all from like my experience of being a teacher, Pilates and yoga and movement. So I started with like little things like rocking my pelvis, which was like a pelvic tilt, right? But I did it <laughs> in my bed and I could feel my body swelling up with fluid. And so in the pain would get worse. So I would just start doing little things in my pelvis to help release like an internal scar tissue. And eventually that became like my whole program. Now I teach online for cancer survivors and I'm training other teachers to help other people too, cancer or not, like it's all about the core recovery. So yeah, and my life just changed. So I had to reinvent myself. And, um, you know, I went back to my studio two weeks after my major surgery, sitting in a chair. And thankfully, my clients were so supportive. And I just used my words. Like, I couldn't use my body at that point. But I just, you know, started shifting the way I taught people after that experience, because it was a lot of a mind body connection. Yeah, that was my next question. How, how was your approach to Pilates after? Yeah, so my approach to that Pilates, experience. Like, how, yeah. how do you teach different? How do you even see the whole workout different? Yeah, so I totally changed my whole recovery, uh, my whole teaching style. And um, because I was a survivor myself and somebody with pain, um, I really changed my approach by listening to my clients mostly. When, so when someone comes in and they tell me they're in pain or their hip hurts or mm -hmm. they have a weak core, I definitely don't go out and give them like the exercise, the hundred or something, right? Because I don't do the exercise anymore. There's certain things I can't do. Like I can't do crisscross. I can't do um, teaser. I can't. So anything um, that brings like fear into my body or frustration or pain, so I experienced like, wow, I wonder what they're feeling in their body and how, what I use in my body and how I can transfer it to them. So listening is number one. And also just the whole um, emotional state of recovery. So e anyone with an injury, it doesn't have to be cancer or not. It could be any chronic. I worked with people with chronic disease too. Um, like just yesterday, I was teaching a woman who's got Crohn's disease and she's had 13 surgeries. She's in my core recovery program. She didn't have cancer. And now she's on um, dialysis. So her mindset is more emotional than physical. Of course, she needs the physical recovery too. But my approach to teaching is really bringing in the whole mindset training and the emotional part of um, exercise more so than the physical. The physical will come. But if they're in that mindset of like, I'm hopeless, I have fear. I can't do this. They're going to feel stuck. And as a mm -hmm. teacher, it's really hard to like push through. So if you can get them to trust you first, trust is a huge thing when you're working with someone like me or someone who's had serious surgery or cancer because they're afraid. And if you can build their trust, like that client is never going to leave you. So that's pretty much how I've shifted my whole practice um, in teaching. It's been life changing. And it's amazing that you said uh, the mind-body connection because this is uh, this is what Tuckets is from from the toes, right? Like, like we have this slogan, open toes, open mind. And it's about connecting the mind and the body and overall bringing that awareness from well, that's the That's funny you said the up. toes because I literally started my exercise program in my hospital bed with my toes. This is no joke. So I actually thought of you guys when I was in the hospital because they gave me these ugly yellow socks that were like slippers. They're called non um, non slip socks in the, yeah, in the surgery ward. Mm -hmm. And well, one they were ugly, and two like they were like they they didn't fit very really comfortable. And I was like, I need some cute toe socks that have like you know little um, pads on the bottom. And yeah, but the only thing I could do was move my toes in the hospital bed. And it starts with your feet. So a big part of my, my teaching and all of my um, teaching is with the toes. So when I was teaching, do you know Marie Jose Bloom? Mm -hmm. So uh, she invited me to her house and I showed her my recovery program. And she was literally in tears crying. 
And she's like, why does nobody know about you? I was like, I'm, I'm like too afraid to like put myself out there being like, you know, I'm not good enough. And that's another whole story of how I changed my business. Right. But she's like, you get it. Like I started teaching like sink your toes into your bed or the floor. Like you're in wet sand and how just using your feet connects to your glutes and then your, your core. So for me, your you know, posture, was, like, yeah, it was, mm -hmm. it was super simple, but I think a lot of people like clients, especially they want to get to the hard stuff and they want to skip over the basics. So I'm a big believer in going back to the basics and really finding your like feeling grounded and, mm -hmm. and anchored in your body. And that will also affect your mindset. So just, That's I funny. really yeah. love to slow people down. And everyone's like, how is this so hard? We're going so slow. I'm like, because you're going deeper. Like you're going inside your body. So I'm a big believer that, you know, we heal from the inside out. Right. And then talking about healing from the inside out, I was listening to one of your interviews, another interview you gave. And then you said that you were dead before cancer. So how did cancer help you to become alive again? That's a great question. And that's pretty much my whole, like, Instagram story is cancer saved my life because before cancer, um, I was a mom, I was married, I had a house, I had pretty much everything I wanted. I had a little studio in my backyard, my own private studio, but yet I found myself not happy. Like I wanted more, but it was like, I didn't know how to get there. And so I never expressed my emotions. I kept everything deep inside. I had a lot of past, um, like hidden beliefs that I didn't even know about. And I think as women, we all have those, especially as women in business, you know, like we, mm -hmm. we want to create this program and we want to create that, but we feel like fear, like, Oh, I can't do that. So when I got cancer, it was like, well, shit, I'm going to die anyway. I might as well just start living and doing everything I wanted to do. And once I started doing that, it was like, I became more alive. And I was like, wow, this is like really healing me. And, you know, my doctors didn't think I was going to live. I had like a 24% chance of survival with the stage wow. three of cancer. It's a horrible cancer. To, uh, you know, it's, it's a very deadly cancer. And I just decided at that point, like, I, you know, I'm going to start living today. And so, you know, I always love inspiring other entrepreneurs to just start going for it. Like, it starts with one step. And for me, it was a whole healing process. Again, emotional healing first before you know you can't just go out and do something if you don't believe in yourself so you have to kind of find what's really holding you back what's that story that's right in your life that tells you you're not good enough as a professional you're not you know you start comparing yourself to everyone well we all have a story you have mm -hmm. one I have one and like it's just start believing in yourself but it takes work so that's where really I say cancer saved my life because I at one point I was suicidal I hated myself I hated my body I compared myself to everyone else and it was a story I created a long time ago as a little kid and I didn't realize that I was really self-sabotaging my whole life my career my relationships and it, I was the problem so once I recognized that I needed to work on myself and you know what not a better time during cancer I was stripped down to nothing like just bones really and I started to rebuild my body rebuild my mindset and I, that's why I connect mind body connection because they are so connected. Wow. And then when you say self-sabotaging, I think, I think, um, uh, this is something I have learned, um, especially this year. And I have started to be aware of how I self-sabotage myself and that affects everything. Like my relationship with my daughter, oh. my friends or the business or and especially me, you know, what I feel. And, 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 and my connection, my own connection. So I, I love that you're mentioning that because um, what I have noticed in this adventure of Tuckets where I get the opportunity to meet a lot of um, studio owners or fitness instructors. Um, and sometimes, you know, you get connected, you get intimate. And, and I hear many times, you know, I feel stuck. I cannot move forward you know, my business is in one place and doesn't move or COVID, COVID is here and then it has shaped, especially the fitness industry so much. Um, and emotionally, not everyone can handle that. Yeah. So my question is, uh, 
what advice would you give to those Pilates instructors or any other uh, person in fitness in order to well, yeah that, that's a great question because, yeah mm -hmm. so right now like during the pandemic especially right so I so if I go back five years ago when I was diagnosed with cancer and it was like everything like just fell apart in my life my world my business I was like oh my gosh I knew at that time that I could not ever live my life the way I was living. I had no plan. I had no strategy. I had no savings. And it was like, okay, like this, maybe my business is needs a little shift, you know, like what can I do in the future if something happens again, like a pandemic, right? So when the pandemic hit, I didn't even panic. I didn't worry because I had already started creating my next strategy step, which I learned in a Tony Robbins business convention was like, what's your exit strategy? And I was like, okay, so I want to create something that's for me online. Let's we'll say, okay. So I do like coaching now as a part of my healing that helped me. So I help other business owners believe in themselves. Right. And then maybe that expires them to create a course online that they can automate and, always have like, you know, a couple little things. So it's, you don't rely on just one thing. Mm -hmm. So if I just relied on my studio that just crashed, like I got cancer, I'm screwed. Right. But if I know I have like this over here, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just started, you know, I started taking that course called, um, new life story coaching, create the life you want. I literally started creating the life I wanted, but I had to have a coach and I had to have a teacher, which is why I now teach that same exact course because it changed my life. So, you know, it says like, what do you envision? What do you want? So as a Pilates owner or studio owner, like what is your big vision? What, what do you really see in your business? Where do you feel stuck? So first you have to create the vision and ask yourself what it is, what's holding you back. Okay. What do you want? And then like we, we create a picture, right? The big picture and you just start, entering the new story before you exit. So if you want to create, you know, this, you have to start doing little steps to get there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like, you know, rebranding yourself, creating that course, but it, it takes time. It's taken me five years to get to where I am. Published a book. I never thought I would write a book. I didn't know how to write a book, you know, but I, I found my way to find the people that would help me write a book. That's I amazing. didn't know how to create an online course. It cost me a lot of money, a lot of money. But Oops. something happened. Let's see, let's wait and see if um, Emily can join us. Meanwhile, I'm going to summarize what Emily said that I think is very important, especially for. Pilates or, or anyone that is watching us that works in the fitness industry. Um, I think we lost her. Uh, we're going to wait and hopefully she will be back in a minute or two. So Emily said something that is, is really key and is diversify your income. And I, I, that's so important. Don't rely only in one bucket, diversify your income. And then if you have enough income, invest it or, or do something in order to make sure you diversify it. Um, the, I'm inviting Emily again. And the other thing that she said that is very key and, and probably not everyone has it is disability. I'm back. You're back. I, I was just summarizing a bit of your tips while you were back. So I was saying that how important is to diversify income and, and their team uh, having um, disability insurance because you never know. Yeah, um, and, my, and my, my most important advice is, um, oh, there's Sonia. She's my one of my, my little students I help from Nepal. She's one of my cancer survivors. Hi, Sonia. Um, so I recommend definitely having, you know, a couple of months savings in, um, I couldn't pay my studio bills and, and I had to have, you know, um, some support and my, my clients helped me, but I had to have a GoFundMe page and I hated that. I hate asking for help. I hate asking for help. So start, you know, put a savings account away because you never know what can happen.
Yeah, I was saying, and if and even grow the savings by investing here and there, or you know, like like especially we women have to be very wise about finances. We cannot rely on other people. Yeah, because for me, like, the number one thing was um was anxiety around money. So the money story, mm -hmm. right? So then, you know, again. We can sit there and go, oh, I, you know, I'm a failure. My business is falling apart. I can't do this. Or you can go, okay, what's going to get me money? Like, maybe I have to add another class. Like, you know, I teach six class. I teach seven days a week. I, nice. I work hard. I don't sit there and wait for the money to come. I create it. Like, so, you know, instead of getting into the mindset of like, oh, it's not working. We'll just shift it. Like, make it work. What could you do today? Could you add another class? Maybe not right now, but because of the pandemic, but maybe a group class, maybe you can go online, get created, create a workshop. There's so much that you can do if it's all in here. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it, you need to have like accountability, like someone to help guide you. So if you don't know how to do it, there are people out there. I'll help you. You can help, you know, reach out. People, people need to help each other here in this, these tough times. And I always say there are more there are more people that are willing to help than the ones that are not. So and, and I, I also find too, and I don't know if you see this too, but people want to change, but they're not willing to invest in themselves. Like so, they stay stuck in the story, and that's really I think one of the big things that um, that you know even like my therapist told me and and my business coaches. There's like wow, like here's someone who's dying of cancer. She's got no money. I had literally had nothing. I lived on credit cards. I got myself in a lot of debt, but I knew that in the end, my coach told me that if you do this, you'll make 10 times much more money. And he was right. Like I have a full business now. I can't take any more clients. I have to go online because and create bigger things because I believe that I was worth it and I invested in myself. So I took a risk on myself and that's really what I want all the women take a risk on yourself. You're worth it. It'll come back. Yeah. Emily, we're, we're running out of time and I have two more questions that I always okay. ask everyone that comes here. One is, who do you admire or who inspires you, who has inspired you and why? Gosh, wow. Um, there's a woman and I don't know, maybe if you guys know or not, but she's not a Pilates person, but she inspired mm -hmm. me. Her name was Chris Carr. She actually wrote, um, hold on. She wrote the, um, the four to my book. Um, and she's a cancer survivor and, but she's the CEO of her own business. So, you know, before cancer, I'm a business person, right? So people think of me as just this cancer person, but you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Like I, I was inspired to be like her. Like, what is she doing? Like, how did she do that? So, I mean, I just straight up wrote her like she's on Oprah show, like, and she responded to me. So let, you know, just follow those people. And I said, Hey, mm -hmm. I want to follow you and be like you. And even though she also helps cancer survivors, she, I'm in a different niche. I'm doing movement, you know? So we all, there's, there's plenty of room for all of us. She oh, is yeah. the person. Mm -hmm. And then we help each other out. My other, um, my other, um, woman who inspires me is another um, well, then her name's Nancy Levin, and she also wrote a book called Setting Boundaries Will Set You Free. So I just finished her year-long program to become another life coach. I have many different certifications, but two are my favorite. And she taught me, which I now want to help other women to in business, mm -hmm. that, that the only person holding yourself back is yourself. So boundaries, we all need boundaries in business, Okay boundaries around like i want to make more money i say i want to make more money but i'm not charging enough because i'm afraid of what my client might think or they might leave but once you start learning to set boundaries and love yourself around your own self boundaries your business will thrive because you know you're worth it and so those two women have been a huge inspiration in my life um and again like i said it really goes back more to the mindset than the physical body Mm -hmm. so once you once you change this everything changes everything changes right our bodies are a reflection of how we are inside yeah. like 
emotionally. And then uh, my very last question, we talk a bit, a bit about feed, but I'm curious to know, what do you think of your own feed? Because with tockets, I have found out that uh, because the toes are out and are exposed, the feet are really exposed despite wearing a sock, uh, some people um, don't like their feet. There are many I love my people. feet. I love my so feet. So what do you think of your feet? Oh, you have beautiful <laughs> feet. <laughs> I love my feet. I love painting my toes. I have one toe that's longer than the other toe. I, I like that, you know? I love it. I love my feet. I have, you know, I I massage my feet a lot. I I have, like, dancer feet from... Yeah, I, I love my feet. Great. This is... You are in, in that 35% that love their feet. That there is this other 65% that doesn't. But I always think, like, feet is a, a big reflection of uh, who we are, and especially the relationship that we have with our feet. We have what we have, the shape, whatever it is, we cannot change it, just, you know, make it beautiful if that makes you feel better, and then just, just show it to the world, enjoy it. Yeah. Emily, thank you so much for being here. Uh, one last thing, where can anyone that is uh, watching this find you? So, uh, yeah, so you can go to my website, it's E-M-I-L-E-E, -E, that's my first name, Emily Garfield, G-A-R-F-I-E-L-D.com. Or you go to my Instagram, Can't Just Save My Life. My website's up on there. Um, yeah, I mean, you can sign up today. I do coaching programs. I help teachers, I train teachers. But I really love inspiring, you know, women, especially in business, to really take it to the next step because – I know you, you can do it, and I really want to help you once you can envision, like, in your empowered future. So if you want to, you know, do that, it's a three-month program. Go there today. We can sign up, and um, you can start dreaming big, right, and creating your life that you want. Yeah. Perfect. Emily, thank you so much for sharing your story with You're us. Welcome. And then uh, we look forward to having you at Perfect. another moment or to see you in some, some event. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Bye.